everyone. This is Carl Baer with uh, HowToMakeRCAirplanes.com. I thought before I went any further with the blog, I would uh, show you a setup of my building area to give you uh, kind of a, some context of where I uh, put together my uh, current project, which is the top flight um, Beechcraft Bonanza. First here is uh, the cabinet I have set up. It's just an old cabinet, I think, that I borrowed from... Uh, from our home, not use anymore, and uh, it stores uh, a lot of supplies uh, that I might use to build with. Uh, just show you a quick look in here. Uh, you know, some drills, uh, popsicle sticks, uh, Dremel stuff. Uh, there's a muffler for an engine. There's a uh, heat gun, which is definitely an essential part of uh, covering, I believe, and just some miscellaneous stuff under there to uh, build with. And if we go back up here to the top, we've got a little. Uh, set of drawers with parts in it, uh, small screwdrivers, soldering stuff, uh, copper wire, T-pins, uh, stuff like that. Um, one of my favorite things is right here, this 3M Super 7-7 spray. I highly recommend using that uh, for making uh, sandpaper um, for your custom-made sanding blocks. Uh, saves money by not having to buy uh, adhesive back sandpaper. Over here is a Dremel tool that I have set up on a drill press that goes with it. And when I need, I just take this out and I use it for, you know, uh, any fine, uh, fine work that needs to have done or cut off. Works great, of course. I think it's a great tool to have. And then we'll pan over here where we come to the building table. And we'll start with this area here. Uh, this is kind of where I do some cutting and, and things like that with a cutting mat shown here. Uh, I, of course, use a piece of cardboard. You can see it's been cut up a lot do some sawing on that instead of on the cutting board, the mat, because it uh, saves it from getting all damaged. Uh, and then down here is where I keep my sandpaper and other supplies that are handy to get to so I can uh, move quickly when I'm building something and uh, not get distracted. And that's part of the key, I guess, to building our planes is having a easy to access uh, building area so that you can uh, move around quickly and uh, get things done. If you notice, this is an L shape table and uh, I set it up like that. I built it with two uh, benches, I sorry, two uh, um, metal shelving uh, set up in this shape and then you can notice over here that I also have uh, set up for when I'm building I label under here fuselage and wings so all the parts, balsa, heart, plywood, hardwood is all set up under here and I'll pan in over here you can see that I've actually uh, labeled the pieces of wood and why I do that is I take the time at the beginning to get it all uh, measured and then I put labels so I know what it is so when I'm ready to build I don't have to go and measure it again I know exactly what it is so I don't make any mistakes and as you can see this has the yellow mat that I wrote about in the blog and uh, it's come in quite handy and you can see that I have on here a uh, about a two inch thick piece of styrofoam and I, I like that thickness to avoid any T-pins going through and hitting and denting my uh, building top. Uh, over here you'll notice the glues, adhesives, uh, exacto and I have some things like that that I have easy to access. Uh, I, I definitely like to use wood glue versus uh, you know your Santa cryolites that uh, I think are a little more uh, noxious and uh, toxic and uh, not really agreeable with your uh, your respiratory system. And I have my epoxies here and, and um, over here is a little uh, plastic container with a foam and uh, there's some metal in it you can't really see that I use to hold my X-Acto knives. And uh, basically I just can put them in there and take them out when I'm ready to use them. But uh, you'll find out, unfortunately, if you don't take care of that if you leave an exacto knife on the table it can accidentally do this. It leans forward and then bang down into your foot. That's not something you want to have happen. Over here is just some containers to hold pencils, saws, things of that sort. We'll go up here and this is where I keep my clamps that I use for building with to hold things together. And I've got my uh, mask and uh, safety glasses. Definitely a must for certain jobs. I highly recommend having a mask on when you're sanding. 
after years of sanding, I don't have much of a tolerance anymore, and I wish I had used the mask a long time ago. On the walls here, I put and uh, hang my drawing plans for building. I do it for two reasons. One, it's easy so I can view the parts quickly, and the other is to unroll and uh, let the plans hang easily. Then we'll come over here on the side of this file cabinet, and you'll notice some magnets. Uh, these magnets are used to uh, to hold uh, what's called a magnetic building system. I'm not using it right now. I have the styrofoam set up because I had such a large part to build. But it's definitely uh, the way to build if you can, and uh, we, we can talk about that in another, uh, another video blog. But uh, I definitely recommend it. And we'll pan over here now, and now we can see the last shelving that I have set up. Uh, on the bottom there you can see my collection of scrap wood. That's just a small uh, box of what I do have. But I definitely recommend always saving your wood because you never know when you're going to need it. Over here I've got just some miscellaneous supplies and then under that box is in this Tupperware is uh, what's ready to be used, all the parts for the Beechcraft Bonanza. And then I've got up here my tool chest and we'll look in here quickly. This is just my tools that I use a lot for building. Uh, small pliers, uh, dial ca digital calipers, definitely use those a lot. And here is just some other tools that I might need, levels, things like that. Up top is just uh, more drawers. Uh, I got this at a garage sale again. And uh, it's definitely a way to, to hold parts easily. And, and when you get a bag, when you get a, a kit, a model airplane kit, you'll get parts in bags and I highly recommend taking those parts and putting them in something like this because I guarantee you because uh, it's happened to me if you don't uh, have a secure place to keep those parts you'll end up losing some and boy it's frustrating when you come to that part in the building and you can't do it anymore because you've lost parts so I highly recommend having some kind of inventory control for that finally over here is the another set of uh, drawers that I have um, other materials and uh, building supplies that I use. Let me come down here to a, a definite thing that I, I uh, highly recommend. It's simply just some bags, Ziploc bags with um, sand in them. I went to the hardware store and bought a bag of sand and I just filled up a bunch of them. And the reason for that is um, when you're building a model airplane, it's wood. So you want to have a s smooth weighted material that can even evenly distribute the the weight over the uh, surface instead of using some sort of heavy object that could dent the wood. So it's it's definitely a way to apply pressure over an even surface without uh, worrying about hurting the uh, the building part you're making. And uh, finally, I just want to show you this one last thing. It's a you might not think it's very uh, interesting, but it's a glass table. Uh, I've been using a glass table for a couple of years now, and I I really highly recommend it. Uh, if you can get one, I got this at a yard sale for a pretty good price. Uh, the reason I use a glass table is for covering. It's a great surface. I don't uh, ruin the covering material or the wood that I'm uh, covering to. I also uh, use it for building planks of balsa sheets, and it's great because it's flat and smooth. And I know when I'm done and it's glued and dried, it's going to be a nice, smooth, flat, even surface and uh, it's perfect for that. So it's a great level um, hard surface for cutting on and no worries there. Uh, let me just show you this one last thing. Here's the fuselage that I'm working on at the uh, Beechcraft Bonanza. And right now the V-tail has just been uh, epoxied on and then over here you can see the sheeting that was applied. And actually behind that is over here is, is the wing that I've built the two uh, sides. I haven't built the center section yet. And one quick thing, we'll just come up here and I'll just show you a couple of models that I've finished a few years back. Uh, this is a um, SIG Spacewalker, third scale, and it's flown a few times. It's a pretty stable model. And uh, over here is a uh, SIG Cadet Senior, the uh, orange and yellow. Sorry about that. And it's, you might notice it, it's from uh, those of you who have purchased the 
the how-to manual on my website, howtomakerseaplanes.com. It's uh, the model that I built as I created the instructions for those that are wanting to build models without uh, a lot of frustration and want to do it kind of a, an easy, um, methodical manner that, manner that uh, can get you from A to Z as quickly and efficiently as possible. So that's, uh, that's my building area down here in my basement. And um, I hope you've uh, been inspired by it, hope perhaps, uh, got some, gotten some great ideas that you can now use for your own building area. Um, definitely uh, my last thing is, you know, take advantage of materials that you have and uh, utilize things that you can get at a yard sale. Uh, you know, nothing's fancy. It's just taking what you have and using it to uh, your best of your abilities. Okay, so that's a tour of my work area. I hope you've uh, gotten some ideas perhaps that you could incorporate into your own uh, building area yourself. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me. I'll be happy to answer any questions I can. This is Carl Baer with HowToMakeRCRPlanes.com, and uh, thanks so much for, for watching. Uh, until the next video, thanks again. Bye.